First and foremost, all thanks and praises unto our power, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Wabrakakwadash. Peace, blessings, much respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone, on down to the rest of the elders who rule well within Israel. Salutations to the hopeful elect throughout the four corners of this whole entire earth, no matter where, whom they may be, or what they may look like, pushing out this purified truth to the rest of the church who believe as well. You men who may not be teachers or prophets, you women, sons and daughters also. And the water to Yahweh Shai, because without him enduring and going to that cross for the nation of Israel and the nation of Israel alone, none of this would even be possible whatsoever. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 5. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. So when we pray, we want to make sure we're not praying to be seen of men. Verse 6, but thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. Now, you don't have to necessarily enter into your closet literally. This is just referencing you praying in secret. You can be out in public and you can say a prayer inside your mind. No one else around you would even have to know you're praying. Okay? But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut the door, pray to the Father, which is in secret. And thy Father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. So we don't always have to be ducked off in some corner somewhere. We could be just praying within our mind. We might be at work and we're praying within our mind. We might be driving in traffic and we'll be praying within our mind. Okay? There's no uh, wrong time to pray per se, but we want to make sure that when we pray, we're not doing it to be seen of men. All right? Verse 7. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do. For they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. So when we pray, we want to make sure that we get to the point. We want to make sure that we pray with purpose. Okay? Don't just pray once a week. But if possible, you know, pray a few times a day. Pray in the morning, the evening, and the afternoon. Let's go to Psalms 55. In verse 17, evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud and he shall hear my voice. So if you're going to pray and you're crying aloud, you want to make sure that you're doing it in a closed off area. You want to make sure you're doing it in secret and not to be seen of men. Evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud and he shall hear my voice. And there's times seeing that when we pray, we want to pray with purpose. You may not always know what to pray about. You may not always have anything in particular in your mind. This is Romans chapter 8 and verse 26. Likewise, the spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And there's times you may be going through affliction in your mind. You may not even want to uh, talk or you may not know what to say. You know, you're just lost for words, so to speak. Well, even when we're lost for words, our spirit makes intercession. It, it basically, um, like the shortcomings that we have, our spirit kind of makes up for that. Like Yahweh by Shemi was shy can read our spirit so even if we're not able to really explain well what we want or what we're going through or we may not be you know well spoken we may not know exactly what to ask for because we don't want to sound repetitive we don't want to sound like a broken record well our spirit is what makes intercession for that you know our groanings our complaints our sighing and crying these things are also thrown up right with our prayers okay so we may not always know what to pray for sometimes 
But one thing that we could pray for is for wisdom. Let's go to James. Chapter 1 and verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and upbraid it not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind, driven with the wind and tossed. So when we pray, we want to pray with faith. When we pray, we want to pray knowing that it's going to be answered. We don't want to be double minded. So we want to pray for wisdom. We want to pray to increase in this knowledge, wisdom and understanding. If you're a man and you don't have a woman, brothers may say, don't pray for a woman. Well, if you think that benefits your spirit, there's nothing wrong with praying for a woman. Don't pray for 30 or 40 women. But if you want to pray for a woman, pray for a woman. You may even want a couple of women. OK, if you feel like that's going to balance out your spirit and it's not going to get in the way or hinder you doing this work, pray for a couple of women. You got um, financial problems. Pray for your 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 issue. You know, whatever you're going through. Don't be scared to pray on it, but when you pray, you want to know in your mind, okay, my prayer is going to be answered. And you don't want to throw up vain prayers that aren't necessarily going to benefit you because we all have our spirit. So we should know what's good for us and what's not. And we want to, again, make sure we're not praying with a, um, a lack of faith, praying with a double mind. Jeremiah chapter 3. 33 and verse 3 call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not so we have to pray to Yahweh Basham Yahushai praying to Yahweh Basham Yahushai well guess what if he's with you he's going to show you great things he's going to reveal mysteries unto you mysteries that most people don't know most people may want but they don't have it all right, let's go to Proverbs 30. And verse 8, remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me. So when Solomon prayed, he didn't pray for riches. He didn't pray to have all of his heart's desires. He really just had a humble mind. He just wanted to have the ability to. To be able to judge the nation of Israel righteously. He just wanted the wisdom to be able to judge such a great people. So when we pray, we don't want to pray for riches. We don't want to pray to have the whole world. We don't want to pray to have all of our heart's desires now. Okay? If you want to pray for a little something, something here and there, cool. But we shouldn't have our minds set on praying to the Lord to have all this gold and silver. To have 50 wives, a thousand wives, to have a huge mansion and, and, and three, four, five, six cars. You know, right now we should just be praying for necessities, praying for little things that might balance you out. You know, things that might fit your spirit, so to speak. And when you do pray, pray with belief. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. So, so Solomon wanted to be right in that 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 middle ground he wanted to be in the safety zone he didn't want to be too poor which would cause him to have to steal and rob and he didn't want to be too rich which could cause him to um not serve the lord feed me with food convenient for thee lest i be full and deny thee and say who was the lord or lest i be poor and steal and take the name of my power in vain so we want to have that same spirit we just want um just enough we don't want to be you know poor we don't want to be rich we just want to be pretty much as you would call just middle class <laughs> you know if there's a such thing anymore we want to be able to just have our daily bread you know have have our bare necessities you know have our horse you know have our clothing have our shelter you know have our means to provide you know if possible, you know, have you a, um, a woman as a help in this day and time. It's not 
It's common to find a woman who's really being a woman. But again, pray for it. If that's what you want. All right. And when our prayers line up with Yahweh by Shami I was shy, that's when our prayers are answered. Let's go to uh, 1 John. First John chapter 5 and 14. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. So when we pray to Yahweh by Shem Shai, and it lines up with his will, that's when our prayers get answered. Okay? That's why when you pray for certain things and it comes to pass, Yahweh by Shem Shai put it in your spirit to ask him. Because it was in his will to make it happen. All right, let's read this again in 1 John chapter 5 and 14. And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. So if we ask anything according to the will of Yahweh by Shem Shai, our prayers are already answered. And we have to know that. We have to believe that. Mark chapter 11 and verse 24 therefore I say unto you what things soever ye desire when ye pray believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them so when you throw up your prayers you shall already feel in your mind okay my prayer has been answered I'm just waiting for it to happen now but my prayers are going to be answered and how are your prayers going to be answered? By asking according to the Lord's will and by serving the Lord, not by being disobedient. You can't be disobedient to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai and think he's going to answer your prayers. Okay. John chapter nine. I believe that's John. Yeah, let's let's try it. John chapter 9 and verse 3. Yahweh Shai answered, Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents. That's not it. Let me see. Let's try 31. Here we go. John chapter 9 and 31. Now we know that the power heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of the power and doeth his will, him he heareth. So when we pray, we want to make sure that we're doing the Lord's will and we're asking in the confinement of righteousness. So what does that mean? When we pray, we shouldn't pray for another man's wife. We shouldn't pray to have someone else's possessions. We shouldn't pray to have a righteous man overthrown. Our prayers get heard. When our prayers line up with Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, and when we're obedient. And we have to understand too that when we pray, we have to have it in our mind that our prayer is going to get answered. We can't be double minded. And understanding that nothing, and I mean absolutely nothing, is impossible with our power. So you have to pray with faith. Mark chapter 10 and verse 27. And Yahweh Shai looked upon them, say it, with men it is impossible, but not with the power. For with the power all things are possible. So with Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, all things are possible. And we have to keep that in mind. We have to consider that when we pray. And the Lord respects the prayer of his saints. And the saints are the Israelites who are doing his will. So with that, I pray that this was simple and edifying through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. So all praises to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Lord willing, this was simple and edifying. Until next time, Shalom.